Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. <coughs> I want to show you a seriously, seriously cool feature in Power BI that I would would guess that not many people are using. Mainly because it's just so hidden. Crazy, it's so crazy how hidden this this feature actually is. Um, but I've I personally just started getting into it, started using it, and I think it is holds a lot of value if you can see how it could be applied to your uh, reports. Um, it's really good from a visualization visualization point of view, and it can also simplify potentially some of the formula and modeling that you actually have to do. Um, so what I'm talking about here is conditional formatting for charts, okay? And so what I've done here, I've conditionally, so this is a this is a visualization of all of my customers here and all of their sales, all of the re, all of their revenue from the beginning of time because I haven't um, actually filled any dates here. What I might do, I might actually filter my dates here just to add another, I've got some, I've got another piece of analysis here as well. Um, but what I might also do is I might also filter by dates here and just show you the, the flexibility for this as well. So what, I, what I've what i done here is I've created different um, colors within my visualization here depending on a measure. Okay, so there's um, if if you wanted to do this sort of dynamic grouping historically, so where you um, could change what was shown inside the visualization um, based on some calculation, you had to utilize some um, DAX techniques that were they're a little bit more advanced. Not not too advanced, honestly. If you get to know how how they work, but um, dynamic grouping and the like um, to actually make make these actually work. But what I've done here is just literally based off a simple measure i've been able to within the visualization create different um different colors in the chart just from conditional formatting okay so what i did and the the cool thing about it is that the the actual conditions or the rules that are determining these colors are not even included in the visual itself okay so what i've done here is i've got i, I created this visualization quite simply I'm, I'm gonna actually i'll delete it first so we can actually create it um, so we'll revert to default. So this is this is just a, the the general um, the general visualization that we have here. Okay, and then what I did is I went and calculated up my customer rank. Okay, so all I did was I used rank X, um, and then I went all customer names, total revenue descending. So this is going to give me one to whatever. I think there's about three thousand customers in this in this data set. I'm going to get all of my customers ranked based on their review. So this particular person is going to be ranked one, obviously. Okay. Then what I can do is without including this measure in this particular um, visual at all, I can come in here and I can say, okay, in, inside, of, inside of the formatting area, you go to the data colors and then there's these three dots and you can click on those dots and go conditional formatting. Okay, so we can do things like color scale here if we want. You know, we can say, okay, based on total revenue, we can create a bit of a scale. You know, that's that's one 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 thing we can do. But say, for instance, we wanted to get more specific. So say I wanted to come in here. Uh, I'm going to revert to default actually, and then I'm going to going to go over here to rules, and I'm going to say, okay, based on field, I'm going to go and select my customer rank. Okay. Based on that, and I'm going to I'm going to actually make it just a smaller subset so you can actually see what see what we're actually doing here. I'm going to say, okay, so if it's greater than or equal to one, and it's less than say, let's say six here, okay. I'm going to add that color. Then I'm going to go add. I'm going to say if it's greater than or equal to six, and is less than eleven then I want it to equal to this color. Then I'm going to add another one and say if it's greater than or equal to 11 and 21 here. Okay, so this is just an example. This is, you could play around with however you set this up, but this is just how, how I'm doing it. So once I set all these up, remember customer rank is not in that visualization. I can then go OK and see the colors within this visualization or, or the way it visually shows me the results is now very, very different. I think this is huge. This is a huge, huge feature inside of Power BI that um, 
that is it's, it's relatively new i believe um but just i don't believe widely used and i think it's huge i think this can add so much value to your visualizations quite quickly now this can be done other ways and i've shown it many many times we use um, dynamic um, dynamic grouping techniques but this is just a different way that you can do it now one and this and obviously you can bring in um, you can just say change different time frames as well so that's going to it's going to dynamically work the different um, different contexts that you put inside your visualizations. You can also, um, you know, use all the other uh, visualizational formatting options that you have as well. One thing, though, one thing that I do want to highlight here, which I, I myself realized pretty early on, is potentially an issue here, is labeling. There isn't really good labeling around what you are actually doing. Okay, and that, and when you do the use the dynamic grouping techniques to showcase this, you actually get a legend based on what is actually showing here. But I don't believe this actually shows um, any uh, anything around what logic you actually have in there. Okay, and so that's something to just bear in mind. That's something to bear in mind when utilizing this. You you'll have to create some additional labeling that makes makes sense. Okay. Now, I've also created an example here in this visualization here. This is, I think a maps is where this can really come into its own as well, um, definitely. So I've got, a, got an example here. So I've got, um, I think this is a more simpler example, actually. So let's just dive into it. Um, I'm going to go through to my conditional formatting. And so basically all I've done here, as I said, well, is it less than, so I've just used my total revenue, um, my total revenue uh, measure here, and I've just put an absolute number in. So I guess one of the other things that is a bit different here is that the, the numbers are more sort of absolute. They're not dynamic numbers per se. You could create measures that are more dynamic and feed them in here, you know, work with sort of percentages which adjust, etc. So there's lots of exciting things that you can do you know, based, based on, on, the, on these particular rules. And, and because I like this technique so much, I, mean, I think I'm going to work some up, some, some more, you know, more advanced ones in the future up around, around what you can do, you know, more, more, you know, more than what I've sort of exampling here. But here I just use an absolute and I said if it's less than 500,000, then um, make make it purple and so what I guess what this enables us to do is enables us to you know look at any time frame and see what the highest um, selling regions were quite quite quickly and quite easily right but again you need good labeling because it doesn't actually say that in the particular visual what you have just done okay and I got another example here that I just want to um, go over as well which I think showcases like how far you can take this say for instance we want to show two visualizations in the same um, in the same uh, uh, report page, right? And so this one is the same one as we just before, the absolute so 500,000, right? But what if we wanted to show the revenue growth? Was it positive or was it negative? And so we, and this is where you know, measure branching comes in. So we can say, okay, well, I've got my total revenue. I then calculated my total revenue last year, right? Then I did another measure called revenue growth, where I said, okay, total revenue minus revenue last year divided by revenue last year. That's going to give me my revenue growth, okay? Then all I needed to do, because I had this measure which calculated this revenue growth dynamically, by the way, because I can select different time frames and they have, have, the, um, have the results updated, the, result, the revenue growth just updates for that particular uh, context in the report page. Now that I have this, I can use this measure in my rules. Okay, so I can come in here, and it's so quick and easy to do. I come in here, I create my go to my conditional formatting, and I said, well, if the value is basically positive, make it green. If it's negative, make it red. So that's basically what I did for revenue growth. And then now I get this visualization like this. So so seriously, so many options. Honestly, this is a this is a. If you're not using this, you should find some way to, to use it, with a caveat of you need good labeling because it doesn't actually show you what's being done, um, with with your conditional formatting. But you know, you could obviously make it a very obvious insight as well. You know, potentially I could say total revenue by country, and then I could come in here and actually change the title and say total revenue by county. Um, uh, positive, positive, uh, what have we got here? Positive versus negative 
growth. So I've just changed my title. It's obviously sort of a bit small and grayed out here, but total revenue by county positive versus negative growth. That's how I would potentially label it to make it look really, really obvious. Okay, a few ideas for you. Hopefully, hopefully you can utilize some of these um, in your in your own models. Um, really, really like the, the, this this concept, these concepts, and um, and um, development ideas of Power BI. So, so hopefully, hopefully you got a lot out of learning about these. Okay. Take the be uh, all the best, and um, if you like if you like this content, definitely throw the video a like as always. Really, really appreciate it, and don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Okay, talk to you soon.